Episode 2 of Season 3 just dropped for Amphibia, and we got a lot to break down this week, especially when it comes to the character of Sasha, who is a particular favorite of mine. But real quick, if you guys love Amphibia, then I'm excited to let you guys know that we here at Cartoon Universe will be hosting a livestream Q&A with the cast and crew from Amphibia on Sunday, October 10th at 10am Pacific Standard Time. That will be tomorrow if you're watching this the day that this video goes live. I'll include a link in the description to a time zone converter so you can see when it will be in your time zone so you don't have to miss it. But if you do, don't worry, it will be uploaded here on the channel for you to see as soon as it's done. We are going to have the whole Frog family there with Bill Farmer, the voice of Hot Pop, Justin Felbinger as Sprig, and Amanda Layton as Polly. For humans, we'll be joined by Anna Akana, who voices Sasha, we've got Troy Baker as Grimes, representing the Toad Army, and Zara Fazal as General Yunan, the youngest ever general of the Newt Army. Finally, series creator Matt Braley will be coming as well, with all of them ready to answer your questions about the show live here at Cartoon Universe. Some of the voice actors will be signing autographed prints all weekend long, and you can buy your own before we get there and watch them sign it live on the air. Simply use the Streamily link in the description down below, as well as the pinned comment to get yours, and I'll see you guys there. Last week's episode was one big half-hour introduction to Anne's world for the Frog family, but their struggles with how to stay safe there are far from over, which is something Anne had a bit of a hard time understanding this week. While she was fully aware that the Frog family were falling for every trap laid out for them in the human world, she believed that she could make them adjust faster by having them confront their biggest issues in the most chaotic of ways, with the harshest of punishments if they fail this time. This is similar to back in Season 1, when Sprig trapped the whole family in the old archive building because he believed that the best way to prepare was to simply immerse themselves in crazy situations to prove that they can get out of anything. In this case, Anne just takes the frogs to the mall and gives them a simple task of Polly not getting into fights, not accepting any scams or offers for free things for Hot Pop, and to not touch anything in the case of Sprig. Since Season 3, the Frog family is sort of uncharacteristically troublesome, but we have to take into account just how overwhelming the situation is for them. They are so used to their tiny little town of Wartwood that Hop Pop showcased a similar addiction to cheap deals and giveaways when he first ventured into Newtopia. The planters are just too overwhelmed for them to maintain focus on the rules. Anne acted similarly back in Season 1, we just related to her more because of how weird her world is to us. Also, can I just say that this baby fight Polly gets into at Create a Carnivore is the greatest thing to ever happen in a Disney cartoon, possibly ever. After some wacky hijinks, the Frog family helps Anne to realize that there is no method, particularly not the one that she tried, to get the Frog family adjusted to the new world this fast, and they move forward knowing that they'll figure it out as they go along. The real meat of the episode, however, came from the second segment, Turning Point, where we see the aftermath of True Colors, but from Sasha's perspective. The episode opens with the king brutally murdering Marcy in front of hundreds of thousands of children and probably quite a few adults, before casually mentioning that she isn't actually dead and to throw her in some sort of test tube. Sasha and Grimes manage to escape by jumping out of a window and being rescued by Marcy's giant bird for some reason. The bird takes them to Wartwood, where Grimes wants to lay low until they can figure out their next move. They lie to the citizens of Wartwood, revealing the truth about King Andreas, but claiming that Anne and the planters went on a special mission to save everyone, and that Sasha and Grimes were there to watch over them for the time being. Sasha is immediately uncomfortable with all of this, which makes sense considering where things left off for her in the Season 2 finale, but more on that later. Her feelings of guilt intensify when the townspeople respond so warmly to her, all acting as if she is a great hero and showering her with gifts. The real kick in the oofer was when Sadie comments on Sasha's growth, something the frogs seem to hold in high regard as I discussed in an earlier video. All of this culminates in Sasha taking time to rest in the planter's home, something she had been avoiding throughout the episode, and stumbling across Anne's journal. Her latest entry talks about how glad she is that things were working out with Sasha, as she had not yet betrayed Anne in the Season 2 finale when this journal entry was written, and to Anne, Sasha seemed to be truly reformed. This is the final twist in the knife that makes Sasha realize that she can't keep lying to people to get them to be nice to her, and that she has to earn that love. When Frogbots come to take over Wartwood, Sasha vows to defend the town until the very end and reveals the truth of what happened to Anne to the people of Wartwood. 
Unsurprisingly, the entire town joins the fight against the frog bots and manages to take them down pretty easily, with Sasha and Grimes taking care of the big boy. I've already seen a lot of fans commenting on the episode and saying that Sasha's change came too fast, but as someone who just got into the show and binged watched it twice in a row, I would have to say I disagree. This episode is called Turning Point. It was not meant to be about Sasha learning the deep lessons that would allow her to turn, but finally taking the turn after having learned those lessons across season 1 and 2. In Season 1, Sasha literally taught Grimes how to lie to get people to love him. They phrased it as just giving compliments, but they were clearly compliments that Grimes didn't hold to be true. In flashbacks, we see a lot of Sasha's life is built around these tiny little lies that she tells, with her motives being where the true dishonesty is. Her goals were to conquer, and she believed she could drag the people she loved along with her as she did it. Something not all that different from Marcy, who believed she could manipulate the others into always going on these magical adventures with her, so she wouldn't have to move and grow apart from them. By the end of Season 1, Sasha and Anne find themselves in a literal representation of what their relationship had become. Sasha was falling to her death, and she was going to bring Anne down with her. In that moment, Sasha learned to let go. This would have been a tragic end to a character who realized just how wrong they were, but she was of course saved by Grimes, which added a new layer of conflict to the dynamic. While Sasha had let go of the idea that Anne was someone she deserved, she had not let go of who she was as a person, and realizing that she was actually harmful as part of Anne's life only made her double down on her hard-edged persona, as she had no one left to really care for. Grimes convinces her to get control of the situation in Season 2, but at the end of the day, Sasha is not an enemy to Anne, just an enemy to Amphibia. Her ultimate goal is to get Anne under her control with lies, but to send her back home so that she can take control of Amphibia with the Toad army, allowing her to give in to her nature while ensuring her friend's safety. The end result of these lies was a situation out of her control, and what looked like the death of at least one of her friends, and any hope of ruling Amphibia suddenly being crushed by King Andreas planning to take over the multiverse. Sasha no longer has goals of conquering Amphibia. She no longer has hope that she can rescue her friends. She no longer believes that her lies and manipulations can gain her love in a way that makes her feel fulfilled. All that remains is one childhood memory that Sasha has, one where she came to Anne and Marcy's rescue to defend them from older girls who were bullying them on the playground, something we have seen her do for Anne even shortly before teleporting to Amphibia. The only part of her that hasn't been destroyed by Amphibia is the part of her that wanted to defend someone, to protect them, and feel their love because of that. We spent two seasons deconstructing every other motive that Sasha has had. This episode itself was fast-paced, but it was not meant to be a self-contained arc, but rather, as the title suggests, it was just meant to be Sasha's turning point after experiencing that arc. With nothing left to lose but life itself, Sasha faced her enemies with the chance to gain back the authentic love and admiration of other people, the only thing that matters after she realizes how much losing it has cost her. But with this being the turning point, that means there will be plenty more development coming for Sasha this season, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it when we cover it. As well as make sure that you don't miss tomorrow's livestream Q&A with the creator of Amphibia himself, as well as all of your favorite characters' voice actors. Links as always are in the description down below, and I will see you tomorrow.